Greetings, I'm Amanda, and I'm 31 years old. Recently, things got a bit tricky with my husband and his mom. I used to think marriage was a breeze, but reality hit me. Despite being a tough cookie, life was smooth sailing when I was single, working as a vet assistant and surrounded by adorable pets. Adventure was my thing, and I even had an old bike from my dad. If it didn't have sentimental value for him, I would have totally claimed it. My dad raised me solo, but I never felt the lack of a mom. He's an awesome dad, and I feel really fortunate to have him. After I moved to Detroit, I got a job helping out at a vet clinic. Everything was going well, and I was picking up things quickly. One day, I ran into Stephen when I was running late and had to grab a cab. Turns out the cab driver was a charming, single-guy-next-door type. His features, especially his nice, silky hair, stood out to me. We had some fun and playful conversation, and I enjoyed the banter. While we talked, he beamed a bright smile and playfully grinned at me. Every now and then, our eyes connected in the car mirror, causing a shy moment for me. But I kept things casual and didn't send any mixed messages. He wanted to know my name, and when I asked why, he humorously proposed going out. I teasingly turned him down, saying he wasn't my usual preference, but I suggested we could be friends if he treated women well. It was all lighthearted and fun. Done, then deal. Do you like Italian food? I know a really good restaurant nearby that you'd enjoy. I'm sure of it. Are you serious about taking me out? Well, I love Italian food, so that sounds great. That day, I had a lot of energy at work, and my colleagues were amazed by my big gestures. Usually, there's this annoying dog, but I stayed calm. My friend Susan came over and asked, What's up? Are you hiding something? I reassured her that everything was good. I was just really happy. She noticed I was a bit distracted during a work discussion. She asked if I met someone cute. I admitted that I met a cute cab driver named Steven, who invited me to an Italian restaurant. Susan teased me, saying, A cab driver? Really? I told her not to judge and that Steven was cute. She mentioned having eyes on someone else. That evening, Steven picked me up. He smelled nice, and I was nervous. It was my first time meeting him. He took me to a beautiful place by a small lake. It wasn't super fancy, but the food was amazing. Steven's best feature is his deep brown eyes and expressive eyebrows. When he smiles, his eyes light up with warmth and kindness. We had a great time, eating pasta, drinking wine, and having ice cream. He even mentioned introducing me to his mother, which felt a bit fast, maybe a red flag. I stay with my dad, who lives with my uncle in Wisconsin. They got a house a while back, but then my mom left. Now it's just my dad and me living together. My dad doesn't like staying in one place for too long. He enjoys traveling. He has this awesome old bike that's still in great condition. He visits me from time to time, and currently he's here, but he'll be leaving in a week. Your dad seems like a cool person, a genuine motorcycle enthusiast. Do you think he'd get along with my dad? It all boils down to how you connect with him. My dad is super protective, like he shields my sister from every little thing, even a tiny bug. And oh boy, he's not too trusting of guys when it comes to me. Remember the last time I introduced a guy to him? He basically scared him away right at the doorstep. It was like a comedy sketch. The poor guy was really nervous. So, here's a fun idea. Let's make a bet. I won you over with the cool spot, the tasty food, and of course myself. Now let's see if your dad approves of me too. I'm betting $1.50 on it. I'm definitely winning that $1.45 bet. You can trust me on this. He's not easily impressed. Amanda, you haven't seen my skills yet. I'm super smooth, like Mr. Cool. I'm going to impress your dad so much that he'll probably want us to tie the knot. Just wait and see, okay? I'm feeling pretty confident about it. We all chuckled thinking he was just joking around. Little did I know, he was dead serious. When I got home late, my dad was sitting there, looking worried. Where were you, young lady? It's midnight. Oh, dad, I was putting in extra hours at work. There were a bunch of clients and emergencies, so I had to stay back. I'm not naive, Amanda. Dad was asking about a guy, but there was no guy. You're overthinking it. I was just with Susan. I called her, and she mentioned you're outside with a friend. Who was it? Okay, fine. He's just an old friend named Steven. He wanted to hang out, so I agreed. That's it. Why haven't you told me about this friend before, and why didn't you let me know? You know I worry about you, Amanda. Sorry, Dad, I am. I'll keep that in mind. Steven's a cab driver, and he's a nice person. Please relax. Why a cab driver? Fine. Next time, just inform your father. At work the next day, I confronted Susan. She was startled at first, but then she understood. Why did you tell my dad about Steven? Chill, I just said you were out with a friend. Why wouldn't I? What if something happened to you? Oh, come on. He's adorable and a gentleman. I'll be meeting his mother soon. Mother? No way. You're moving too fast. The first date doesn't determine anything. He could be a creep for all you know. 
don't bet on it, you'll lose. Since you're such a great judge of character, don't even try. We exchanged numbers and he used to call more than text, saying he loved hearing my voice. He even proposed to visit his house, claiming his mother was eager to meet me. I got scared, thinking about Susan's words. Maybe I was moving too fast. I wanted to take it slow and see how things worked with him first. I told him to hold off on involving his mom for now. Stephen was persistent, but eventually understood. We needed to get to know each other first. As much as I enjoy hanging out with you, I'm new to this, and I want to take it slow before involving anyone else. I like you, but I want to like you more, you see? Sure, got it. I'm sorry, but I've never felt so excited before. It's always enjoyable when you're here, you know what? Same here. I'm happy we crossed paths. I'm usually outgoing, but not many guys stand out to me, so this is a bit new. So, are you saying I caught your eye? Are you acknowledging that I'm different from the other guys you've met? Certainly. Oh wow, saying this aloud feels more awkward than just keeping it to myself. You're the only person I feel I can truly be myself with, Amanda. I feel the same way. We officially started dating after spending three months together. Steven invited me to a baseball game where his friend was making their debut on the team and asked both of us to come along. Throughout the game, Steven sat really close to me, making it clear he was interested. When our eyes met, he leaned in and gave me the sweetest kiss. And that was it, the beginning of something special. I was totally captivated by his charm. He had lots of friends whom he'd introduce me to, and we'd hang out, share drinks, and stay out late. Steven always made sure I got home safely. My dad kept a close watch on him whenever he dropped me off. The last time he did, my dad insisted he join us for dinner, just the four of us. It turns out Stephen had already won my dad over. It's quite unusual for my dad to invite people over, but I think he's excited about winning a bet for $50, lol. We organized a special steak dinner for our friend Stephen, featuring fish fries, a bit of rice, and United Kingdom curry. We even enjoyed some excellent red wine from Detroit. The spread was extravagant for just four of us. I wore my best dress in his favorite color, violet. When Stephen showed up, he surprised us by wearing a fancy tuxedo and looked really handsome. Before sitting down to eat, the four of us chatted and got to know each other. So Stephen, how long have you been living in Detroit? Oh, for two years, sir. I know the city inside out. Oh, that's amazing. You drive a taxi, huh? Hey, recall that night when you caught a ride with that strange person? My dad enjoys those kinds of tales. Not now, Amanda. We're still in the early stages of our relationship, and my dad believes it's not the right time for such stories in his home. Your dad is correct, Amanda. We can be affectionate elsewhere, but not in this place. Hey, Stephen, can you share that strange man story Amanda talked about? After we finished dinner, as Stephen was getting ready to go, he said, Hey, do I owe you 50 bucks? Nah, I don't need it. I'm just happy to show I can be smooth. Look at you, so confident. You must be feeling good. I love you, you know? Yeah, I love you too. It's been five months and Stephen finally asked me to meet his mom. I thought it was the right time. I remember nervously standing outside her door trying to make a good impression. Stephen always spoke highly of his mom, Donna. I breathed in deeply and tapped on the door, my heart racing. The door creaked open and there stood a lady with a friendly smile and gentle eyes. She invited me in and a wave of relief washed over me. It felt like things were going smoothly and I crossed my fingers that this meeting would be the beginning of a wonderful connection. As the night unfolded, Donna displayed a real curiosity about getting to understand me. She inquired about my family, hobbies, and dreams. I enthusiastically recounted my tales, aiming to forge a meaningful connection with her. As the night went on, I found myself becoming more at ease in Donna's company. I appreciated the opportunity to connect with Stephen's mother. However, amid the enjoyable conversation and laughter, a nagging feeling persisted. Donna's warm smile sometimes appeared forced, and her gaze betrayed an unidentified emotion. I couldn't help but wonder about the thoughts behind her eyes. As dinner concluded, Donna excused herself, leaving Stephen and me alone. Turning to Stephen, curiosity and concern filled my eyes. Do you think your mother likes me? There's something off and I can't quite figure it out, I confessed. After excusing himself, Stephen returned after 30 minutes with Donna, both carrying plates of desserts. During our conversation, Donna praised me, expressing how fortunate Stephen was to have found someone like me. The topic shifted to marriage, and my heart skipped a beat. I choked on my cupcake, and Stephen glared at his mother, seemingly caught off guard. Donna's words hinted at Stephen's intention to propose, and during our next date, he did. The wedding was simple, held at a small hotel to avoid unnecessary expenses. I was overjoyed to have Stephen as my husband. Throughout the ceremony, Donna remained silent, 
her expression cold and distant. While I would have empathized with a mother feeling sadness at her son's marriage, Donna's actions left me unable to connect with her. Eventually, Stephen moved into my house and Donna's demeanor remained enigmatic. My dad has returned to my uncle's house. He said he'd visit Stephen and me soon. Once we got settled, Stephen and I decided to spruce things up a bit. He transformed our bedroom into his dream space. I'm not too fussy about decorations, so it's fine by me. I took care of organizing the living room and did a little work in the kitchen. Susan came to see us shortly after getting married, even though she was really sick. She made the effort to visit us as soon as she could. Having her and Stephen connect was awesome, but things took a turn when stuff began vanishing from my place. What do you mean, gone? It kicked off with my little things, even my top-notch jacket. Bits and bobs kept going missing now and then. I brought it up with Stephen, but he shrugged it off, saying I likely just moved them around. He wasn't too eager to help me track them down. Should I swing by and lend a hand? I am your good luck charm, after all. No, it's cool. I'll handle it. Probably just misplace them. I sorted through the whole closet, but it didn't ease my mind. Objects mysteriously disappeared without a trace. I pondered this peculiar phenomenon while at my job. This puzzling trend persisted for a whole year, with a notable increase during Stephen and my honeymoon. Upon our return, chaos awaited us at home, as if an intruder had ransacked the place. Beer bottles littered the floor, dirty dishes piled up, and a foul odor emanated from unwashed clothes. Suspecting my dad, the sole possessor of spare keys, I called him, only to discover he was still at my uncle's house. I intentionally skipped some details because I didn't want to make him anxious. I believe Stephen and I could figure things out eventually. When I got home early from work, I felt uneasy as I unlocked the door. A sense of danger hit me. Even though I put the keys in, the door didn't lock properly. I entered silently, trying not to make any noise. It turned out to be another break-in, and I heard noises coming from the bedroom. I took an umbrella from the corner and went towards the noise. Looking around the corner, I was surprised to see Donna messing up my closet and wearing my favorite jacket. When I told her to stop, she looked at me and claimed I had enchanted her son. I was puzzled and asked how she got in. She came at me, shouting that it was her son's home, not mine, and that everything was hers. Out of fear, I protected myself. The umbrella accidentally hit her head. Not too hard, but it made her lose consciousness. I phoned the police, and Donna tearfully admitted her mistake saying she was scared of losing her son. She said sorry, realizing the hurt she caused in our relationship and the invasion of our privacy. Her love for Stephen led her to do something extreme, but she now grasped how serious it was. The police put handcuffs on her, and I showed them my property documents to prove I owned it. The police said Donna broke in and stole things. They also told me to be careful with weapons around people. When I looked at Stephen's face, I could see he felt both sorry and sad. Trying to explain about Amanda, I said, it's complicated. Donna has always been super protective. She couldn't stop being overprotective when we got married. She thought she had to protect me no matter what, even if it meant doing things that are not okay. Stephen, are you a child? Don't you know the difference between right and wrong? I'm sorry, Amanda. I didn't think it would go that far. Amanda added, At first your mom seemed nice, but her true thoughts were hidden behind her friendly face. I can't handle this situation any longer. Even though forgiveness wasn't instant, we saw that Donna was truly apologetic and Stephen had misunderstood. We realized Donna's love for her son had influenced her decisions. Over the next few months, we took measures to protect our home and privacy by changing locks, getting a security system, and clearly setting limits with Donna. Feeling really sad because Stephen hurt me, I wanted some time alone. I told him we should take a break. Stephen got it and let me be. My dad stayed with me until things got better. Donna got into trouble and will be out of jail soon, but she can't be part of my life anymore. Right now, I'm getting better, but things need to change for Stephen to be in my life again.